Hello everyone, it's Teddy, and yes, counter spells are okay in Commander, in Casual Commander, but that's kind of obvious. And what I wanted to talk about today was the kind of unofficial bans, or I guess the most strict ban list of eliminating Casual Commander play. And I thought it was kind of interesting. I remember watching a Pleasant Kenobi video about it. I think this drama, if we could even call it that, is all a little old, outdated. But I wasn't around, or I wasn't making magic content. I was around when this was happening. Not making magic content, though. So I wanted to talk about it for myself. I think I'll be a lot more generous towards the list. And I have a lot better of an understanding of how casuals actually play the game than... I think Pleasant Kenobi does, because I'm a casual commander player. So, we are going to be talking about the Wharf's casual bands, and their three levels of play, so let's get into it. First things first, <coughs> there are three levels of play. T-Rex level, normal commander, Rapture level, Wharf casual, and Vicious Cat. Non-modified, pre-constructed decks only. Okay, sounds pretty self-explanatory. So, T-Rex level follows the official wizard's ban list. This level of play is for top-tier decks and decks that can stop them. Now, first and foremost, I think that I know this is the more in-depth explanation of what the format or the level means, but I, I would just drop this level of play is for top-tier decks and decks that can stop them because... You list it up here as normal commander, which is what it is. It's pretty much anything that's not a pre-con. So drop that, and I think this makes sense. Rapture level play follows the official wizard's ban list and has the following rule changes and additional banned cards. This is where things get crazy. Infinite or near-infinite combos are banned. Now I'm kind of uh, any card or board state that card the cards could produce or produces a set of actions that could be repeated indefinitely, or a set of actions using the same cards or abilities that could be consecutively repeated more than five times. All right, so I'll be honest, casual player take, infinites aren't very fun. I, I'll, I'll just be frank. Infinites are a part of the game, I agree. But I feel like there's a different sort of... It, it, like, stimulates a different response when you just infinite someone out of the game. Like, I think the example most formats use is the Minecrank Blood Chief's Ascension. You get them both stacked up and suddenly, you know, apply one mill effect and suddenly they mill out their entire deck while you're doing damage to them the whole time. It's, you know, it's it's... Not as fun, because it's not as interactive. I guess the idea is you get your two cards down and then you win. But that's just talking about the best infinite combos. And, like, there are three, four, five infinite card combos. That's where it gets kind of crazy. But let's get into the next one. Commander damage. A commander's max commander damage per combat phase cannot exceed the commander's printed attack value no matter how many times it applies damage during the combat phase. Okay, that sounds awful. Now, I find this... Yuck. I, I, I don't even know how to describe this. I, I feel like... I feel like almost... Like, the most basic deck that you can play is a Voltron deck, in a, or a Stompy deck. A deck that has either your commander or your creatures just swing out and do damage. And generally, I think it's easier for lower-level commander decks to just channel all of that focus into their commander... And have their commander swing out and deal a bunch of damage. You have to do 21 damage with the commander with your commander to KO a player. Sorry. And this is saying that. Wow, they're saying okay. I gotta read this part. This is kind of insane. They said a 4-4 commander with double strike will do a total of eight damage during the combat phase, but only the first four points will count as. Uh, commander damage. Anything after that is normal damage. Now, I wasn't even thinking of that. I was thinking of, like, plus one, plus one counters. 
Uh, I, I don't know what else we're thinking. I, I was just thinking of plus one, plus one counters mainly. But it also eliminates double strike. That's crazy. That I, I don't like that rule at all. Even as a casual player, I feel like the easiest deck to gain, get a grasp of is a deck that abuses your commander and just has your commander swinging for a bunch of damage over and over again. Even if not buffed, but, you know, sometimes they get some buffs along the way. It, that just seems crazy. It seems like it's purposefully slowing down one of the most generally uh, accepted playstyles. I, I feel like Voltron is not a very strong uh, playstyle, and it sees a lot of play in casual formats because of how easy and, I guess, simple to understand, whether it's through, uh, what is it, like Enchantress... Or you're playing some, what else do we have? Equipment, uh, just plus one, plus one counters, going tall, using your commander as the core for that. Yeah, I don't know. It, it just seems weird to eliminate commander damage. Or at least how much commander damage you can do in a single turn. I kind of get it, because I guess getting hit by a 2020 can feel bad if it's a commander but this is not a very hard problem to solve if if it's your commander you just remove it right like casual decks still run removal i think right yeah i run a little bit of removal even precoms have removal but whatever that rule i'm not as cool with I, I understand the infinite or near infinite combos being banned in this rapture level play but uh, also, I just gotta say, I didn't read that additional banned cards. I am not a fan of additional banned cards. That, that seems like a truly awful change. I, I think it's already hard enough to, for a casual commander player, to kind of grasp what the RC was banning. And now we're entering a age, which, by the way, I'd like to say first and foremost this was made before the brackets were announced and this was a thing but now that we're gonna have the brackets and trying to figure out which cards are i mean it won't be too hard to figure out which cards are legal in your bracket or not but having additional banned cards on top of it is just so bizarre and i i just yuck i hate the idea of that adding additional banned cards just makes it that much harder for a casual to get in i think for the most part if a player identifies with a card, even if it's a little staxy or it has something like, I, I, I don't know, massive mana generation, it says like, you know, a planeswalker, tap it for, give it a loyalty, and it gains three mana. I, I don't know. It, just let players play with what they want to play. So let's see where it goes next. All right. During the course of... Of the entire game, if an effect would allow you to take an extra turn, you are, may only take one extra turn. Any player that takes an extra return will receive an emblem that says, You may not take any extra turns for the rest of the game. Interesting. Okay. So, I understand what they're trying to do with this. And I get it. But, I feel like you're targeting the problem in the wrong way. So, one of my casual playgroup's biggest problems is that we have our decks, and to be fair, most of these come from uh, games that it was their first time playing their deck, but most of the time, our, my friends are very notorious for taking, like, 10-minute turns. And I, I don't think I have to say this, but if you didn't realize this, having to sit there for 10 minutes, and then 10 minutes for the next person, and then 10 minutes for the next person, and then it finally comes to your turn, 40 minutes have passed. Or, sorry, 30 minutes. <laughs> what am I saying? When you move, presumably 40 minutes have passed. I am very interested in lowering the amount of time that is spent playing the game at the table. I realistically don't care how many turns you have. I don't care if it's one. I don't care if it's two. I don't care if it's ten. What matters to me is that if you're going to use ten turns, that you do it at a 
cordial, right? And, uh, or, you know what, I'm not even going to try and sound smart. It, you do it fast. Play fast, and I don't care. That That's the moral of the story. So, I think a better rule than uh, limit turn actions to one per turn would be to say that everyone at the table has a five-minute turn timer. If you use an extra turn spell, it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't reset your turn timer. You just have five minutes to play the game. And that is for your time where you have the table and you're in charge. And if you pass those five minutes and you're still playing, your turn ends and it moves on to the next person's turn, whichever side it be on. So that's what I would do because I think this is a very good observation, but solved in the wrong way. Many times new players get caught up on effects like landfall, like storm, for example, uh, and or I guess more like is it spell slinger type cards, and they will spend enormous amounts of time trying to optimize their play. And in reality, if you tell me that you're not playing at your best, but you're only taking five minute turns, I will thank you with all my heart. Because I really don't care if you're playing optimally if you're going to take 20 minutes to take three turns. It's not fun for anyone at the table. And if it's down to two of you, it's not fun for either person. Well, it's, you know, it's fun for the person taking the turn. But yeah, so let's see what else we got here. Rule change. Storm count cannot proceed past one. Now I get that. So, this is basically just saying that you can't play Storm in the format. Or, you know, any Storm cards. This feels a little oppressive, but I don't know how you could solve it. I mean, you could just say there is, you know, Storm count for everyone. But I get it. Storm is a somewhat complicated mechanic to do early and it can lead to these long drawn out turns especially with these is it decks that are like trying to play perfectly optimally there's one commander that when you play one of your spells it reloads your entire hand and then you're just you know back to square one and you can just play the best spell from each of your hands as you're going through your entire library and putting the old stuff on the bottom getting your new stuff and it's it's miserable for people to watch at a new table. I know this might be unpopular, but I, I am hoping this resonates with a lot of new players. Storm can be a lot for a new player to grasp. If I were to hand, and I actually, here, I actually have an example. I have a Storm deck, or maybe not a Storm deck, but, a, but an Is It Spell Slinger deck that I believe has Storm decks. It's the one from the pre-con from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. I believe it's called Quick Draw, and its whole point is playing a bunch of cantrip s spells and getting a bunch of cheap spells out quick, and then having these massive turns where all of the spells that you cast in one turn add up and you just get to blow up something with one big spell at the end of all of your small spells. It can be a lot, and pretty much every new player who's tried it has said they don't like it. And it's, I, I would say... The pro big problem is that it's overwhelming. So, I see this uh, Rapture level play as being a, hey, maybe you don't want to play Commander that seriously. Or a, like, hey, you're new to Commander. This is where you should start. And we'll just ease you into the game. We're going to take away a lot of the scariest stuff that... Uh, can turn off a player from wanting to play the game again. And honestly, I see this format having a place, but we haven't finished. Let's keep going. All right. Cascade is banned. Anything with Cascade is considered to not have Cascade. Oh, no. You know, honestly, I was kind of on board with this list. Uh, it, it feels weird, because I've heard this list basically being globally rejected by everyone who reads it. I remember, I, I think I said this in this uh, intro, but I originally heard about this list through Pleasant Kenobi. And 
he he crapped on this list so hard. But I, I kind of get all their decisions. I get that this was clearly meant for casual players, and I kind of liked it. But Cascade? Cascade is such an easy-to-understand mechanic. You should only take out mechanics that slow the game down or are a, li a little harder to understand. I guess I didn't like the commander damage change. That is, like, the core of casual. If you're taking out commander damage, doing more when it's buffed, that that's just goofy. But this, too. Keep Cascade, please. Please. Uh, I, I obviously, they haven't changed anything after you know, this whole ordeal, so they're not going to change anything by me pleading with them, but I know you're banning Cascade under the pretense, I, I would guess because it's free mana, kind of, it's like mana cheating. I The explanation I've heard from people who've read this is <laughs> they played against one, like, Slivers Overlord deck or whatever, the Sliver that has Cascade, and they're just like, I think it actually might even give all your slivers Cascade, and they're like, no, no more Cascade. But Cascade's just not that oppressive, so yeah, I'm gonna stop talking about that, because that one gets me a little, a little, it's getting me to act up. I, I don't like it. Cascade is banned? No. Please no. I don't like that at all. Alright. Annihilator X is errata to say when this permanent comes into play, if you cast it from your hand, it gains Annihilator X. So... They just change it so Annihilator only works when cast from hand. Honestly, not the worst. It seems like the Cascade ban and the Annihilator ban seem to, like, go hand in hand in a way. I don't know what cards could cheat out an Annihilator something Eldrazi. Like, what I'm imagining is, I believe Ulamog the Defiler is the big Eldrazi that can get, like, Annihilator 8 fairly easily. And... I, I just imagine that that somehow got cascaded out, and they were just like, nope, Annihilator's changed, Cascade has changed, we're not doing either of those. And I feel like if you're banning one of the primary ways to get cards out without actually playing them from your hand, it feels a little goofy to errata Annihilator X, but I guess there are other ways to cheat out cards, so, you know, he's just they're just trying to cover all their bases. I kinda get it. So... Oh, that was stupid. Sorry about that. Let's just go right into the next rule. Annihilator, I, I kind of get. Annihilator, I, I'm just gonna... Here. I didn't talk about Annihilator in its entirety, and that, that's probably what I was trying to go into. But Annihilator is not a very fun mechanic to play against. And I know I talked about up here with commander damage that, you know, you the key to destroying a buffed commander is removing them, but this could be very easily applied to Annihilator cards. However, I, I, I don't know. The idea that you just have to sacrifice stuff if they hit you, like, normally for a commander, if I'm getting swung at for, like, 8 damage, 10 damage, 12 damage, I don't care, even if it's commander damage. I know that if it's, you know, 12 damage or even 11 damage, I'm getting 2 shot, but... I just, uh, I find Annihilator so much more oppressive because while this is hurting my life total, commander damage, Annihilator's hurting my board state and kind of just ruining it. Oh, also it says non-land permanence, but doesn't Annihilator say normally just sacrifices permanence? Interesting. I, I thought it was just sacrifices permanence. Because I, I swear you could sacrifice lands. Maybe that's just the specific Eldrazi I'm thinking of, but whatever. We're done with an Annihilator. Let's read the next one. Any time a spell or ability that destroys, exiles, sacrifices, changes controller, or removes two or more lands in one card, in one turn, that one or more opponents control will have the following added to the stack after the resolution, then your opponents may return all lands to the battlefield. Under the effects, if they were tapped, they come back tapped. Okay. So, okay. I get this. So, this is... Oh, and let's read this one, too. This is the same thing, basically. Lanes that become creatures and die due to controlling player choice to attack or block with them would die as a result, then. Do not return to play if you're forced to attack by a spell or ability opponent controls, and then they do. Okay. 
this is basically a rotting and no mass land destruction. I think that's fair. And I basically see no reason that this rule doesn't... Well, I, I do. I, I understand that mass land destruction is part of certain decks and the way they play, but generally... I think this is a very globally accepted opinion. Mass land destruction is looked down upon. So this deck is saying that if you cast an- or this rule is saying if you cast an Armageddon, only your lands are destroyed. All of your opponents will come back uh, next turn. Oh, no. Uh, a thing will be added to the stack. So pretty much you'll Armageddon, destroy all of your lands, and their lands come back immediately after. That's kind of funny. Honestly, that's like a super big flex if you can beat somebody with that rule scheme. But yeah, no, this is, uh, I get it. I get it. I don't like mass land destruction. Uh, it really sucks to have played against me. And I have had the gift of the only time experiencing losing permanence like lands in a massive way being annihilator but according to this rule i would it, you know if annihilator still said you may sacrifice x permanence it would uh hey i would actually get my lands back which is pretty cool no land destruction awesome uh yeah or actually it specifies two or more lands so there still is land destruction because my main complaint was gonna be like i feel uh, because you know Demolition Field is a pretty widely used land, and it can deal with problematic lands. Like, I know one that's legal is... I actually can't remember the name of it. It's like Hall of the Dead, Walk of the Dead, Land of the Dead. I, Moral of the story, really good land. If you have, I believe, seven, five or more unique lands, seven or more unique lands, You ca every time you cast a uniquely named land, you get a 2-2 zombie. It's a great effect. I, I mean, there's no downside. It's just all upside. And it, I think the downside is, I guess, it taps for a colorless, if I remember correctly. But it's a really good land. You should run it, basically. Regardless, this isn't that bad. This is fine. Cool. Uh, let's see what the next one is. A player loses the game if he acquires 20 or more poison counters instead of 10. So, many people have tried to come up with a solution because obviously the 10 poison counters was balanced around standard, as are all of the cards that, or generally all the cards that have poison. So, uh, a lot of people have been like, you know, maybe a way to balance poison would be to make it because, you know, standard, it's balanced around 10 because 10 is half the life total. They're like, maybe poison should be 20 in commander because 20 is half the life total instead of just dealing a fourth of the life total and having, you know, Finn dominate one person and then just get wiped out because he's too weak. But moral of the story, I'm saying that too much, I'm sorry. I think this is a decent change. Loses the game if, to, you know, poison, I think, is already kind of a look down upon archetype and I get why in the context of everything else here people would get mad looking at this change but this change honestly is one of the most tame in the entire list and frankly balances poison better than Wizards of the Coast has for Commander because as I've stated and I hope to be the case in the future Wizards of the Coast should not balance cards or tune cards around commander commander should be a for fun game mode where it's kind of like a battle royale of card effects and you know you, you basically spec yourself out or play on whatever budget you're having fun with i think having said that my morals are telling me i kind of want to keep poison at 10 because i don't want to change rules specifically for Commander, but having said that I like certain things like Storm Count being low just to keep prevent people from playing Storm as new players, uh, extra turns being limited to one, that should just be a time limit on turns. Uh, I think this is a good change, all things considered. 
So we're not going to touch that. That's where we're going to stop. And let's read this one. Planeswalkers. The abilities of following Planeswalkers will have one or more of their abilities altered or removed. I don't need to read any of this. I actually have Tamiyo in the Miss Bumbleflower precom. Uh, I don't think any of this is good. None of it. You should not be, in my opinion, and let me enlarge for this part. Please don't change any card text. And please don't ban anything that hasn't been banned before. I know you're trying to make a new format. Like, as you've listed here, this is going to have be a new format, basically, that has new rules and additional banned cards. But I urge you to not do that. It's It just makes things so much harder, and I think that you should encourage a smooth transition into uh, the T-Rex level play, which is the normal commander, as you listed at the top, but then also said it was a level of play for only top-tier decks and decks that can stop them. I think by either just cutting out entire abilities, uh, sorry, entire abilities of cards that are on the list, or just outright banning extra cards, you are making it harder for a casual commander player to transition into normal commander, because they will look at things like Tefiri, Temporal Archmage, Tamiyo Field Researcher, and Narset Transcendent, and not even consider their ultimates, which, to be fair, to be fair, you shouldn't read or use a Planeswalker for their ultimate ability. If the only reason you're using a plane wa Planeswalker is their ultimate ability, and you're not running, like, a super dedicated to proliferation, uh, doubling counters on Planeswalkers, which I think Vorinclex can do, but I'm not sure, uh, you are just... You shouldn't even think about the commander's ultimate, because it, you're probably not going to cast it. So, having said that, I don't like the Planeswalker changes. Let's see what else they have. And there's a ton of banned cards here. Okay. So, I am fairly new to Commander, very casual, as I've said. And there are some cards that I would consider massive red flags in terms of strength or in terms of fun. Bolus's Citadel is one of the strongest CDH cards in the game. Blood Moon is a very salty card that converts, I believe, all of your non-basic lands to mountains. Blightsteel Colossus does 11 infect damage. Uh, wait, what else do we have? Aura Shards. I, I forget how Aura Shards works. I think it's like every time you play a card, you destroy a an enchantment or artifact. Atla isn't that strong, I feel like. You know, she's good, but she's not that strong. Armageddon's Mass, Land Destruction, Approach to Second Stun, Alt-Win Condition. That's pretty easy to do. Aether Flux is, you know, just another ad nauseum kind of... It, you know, it's a really good life effect. Or, sorry, spend lots of life, deal lots of damage, I believe, is how it works. Ad nauseum, super strong. Yeah, moral of the story... All of the cards here are very strong cards. And is it good that they are banned? Wow, Crater Hope and Cyclonic Rift. They are gone. Okay. Is Dockside on here? No, Dockside managed to make the cut. Wow, interesting. Well, uh, oh, what about Mana Crypt? Let's check that out. Considering the more recent bans. No, Mana Crypt made it too. What kind of goofy. Well, either way. Oh, look at that Light Pauses band. I know Light Pause is a little sad because uh, it's like a super budget commander due to it being an enchantment kind of commander. And, ah, oh, that's sad. It, I guess it has like high highs, but you can build it on a budget super easily. And let's check out... Yeah, there are a couple weird ones that I'm kind of surprised to not see. It looks like they did a couple... Like, to say, Weatherlight Captain, they did a couple, like, CDH bans, just to not even let you play. Oh, there's Urza, Lord High Artificer. Uh, I was wondering where he was, but I was... it seems like a lot of these bans... <sighs> this is so weird. I... I don't like cards being banned. 
extra cards being banned. Don't get me wrong. I am fine with a list of cards being banned. Having a ban list is okay by my uh, accounts and by most accounts. I think most people are fine with cards having a lifespan that is determined by how strong they are in a format. Oh, look at that. I was thinking about building a Chulain deck. I just saw him here. Oh, sorry. Not even on screen. There he is. Chulain Teller of Tales. They, because I like ban. But, yeah. I, I really don't enjoy the extra card ban list. Because, as I've said, I've stated my opinion on this with the Planeswalkers. I think you should make it as easy to transition from nor this extra format to normal commander uh you know you should make the shift easy and the more cards you ban the span list let's just scroll to the bottom has 174 extra bans and that is excessive and a lot of them are the more powerful or just win conditions for you know not even like cdh back decks like you know, you don't have to be CDH to use Walking Ballista, but I guess Walking Ballista is something that can be used or easily exploited and turned into an infinite. So I kind of get what they're doing. They banned a lot of stacks pieces here, like Stasis, Static Orb, Winter Orb. There's more examples. That, you know, they banned Urza, who plays really well with stacks. It seems like their goal was to just make the experience of playing a lot more fun for a casual player. And I can respect that. But at the same time, it's a little... I don't know. I just think that this is all too much. I think that many people have talked about this. I don't like Rule Zero. But there has to, there, I just don't like card bans. I don't like extra card bans because this is not a store specific thing. All of these other rules you can kind of explain with people or even rule zero in and many people do rule zero in. Like at our table, we basically say infinite and near infinite combos aren't fun. We don't play those and you know, it's fine. We're all playing with relatively, I guess many people would consider them budget decks because all of our decks are in the 100 to $200 range. And we just generally don't use infinites because, not because the infinites are expensive, but we'd rather put our budget elsewhere and decks can perform perfectly fine without the infinite combo in them usually. So, all of that said, my main gripes with the Wharf casual list, I think a lot of people had a much more visceral reaction to this list than I did. I think that instead of removing extra turns, just add a turn timer. We've done that before, and we've and it still took us like 40 minutes to play a commander game. It was kind of absurd, but that just goes to show the game was... You know, we were all having fun, and we were all moving really quickly. We all got to... We might, all might have not played as well as we'd hoped, but it, the game we got to play so many games. It was super fun. Uh, storm count, I can... I, I think that's fair, but if you're just gonna reduce the storm count to one, I would just outright ban storm cards. I would just say that. Kind of like you banned cascade cards. I, I think that would just be easier. And... Yeah, uh, just don't don't limit Planeswalkers ultimates when you're almost never going to cast them. I think it's a very important thing to kind of drill into new players' heads that Planeswalkers are on the battlefield, they are permanents, and it is perfectly fine to swing at them because this is going to kind of encourage a playstyle where new players aren't going to ever swing at the Planeswalkers because there's no payout for a lot of the best ones. Like, for example, uh, let's look at Tameo Field Researcher, who says you may cast non-land cards from your hand without paying their mana cost. Uh, you get Omniscience permanently as an emblem. That's pretty good. 
and now it only draws three cards. That is good, but is it worth the, what's it called, the like seven uh, mana that, or seven loyalty that you have to pay? I, I don't think so. I'd rather probably, I, I don't remember what her second ability does, but I'd probably just rather use that. But yeah. Uh, delete all the ban list. Just get rid of all the ban cards. Uh, let the table work it out. I kind of get why some of the stuff's on here. You're like excluding CD CDH cards. Edric, I remember being a, I believe a stacks piece esque card that can be relatively annoying. But yeah, just just let players play in their own means. If you're gonna add one of these extra formats, you don't need 174 cards banned. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's all I have to say. So, instead of closing out here, I'd like to share a little bit about why I'm, uh, you know, recording so late. So, I, know, I haven't done this before. We're trying something new. A look into the life of Teddy. So, unfortunately, all of our cats escaped today due to our door. Our front door is a little loose and kind of jangles open sometimes or doesn't shut correctly so my little brother was leaving and all of our cats escaped or sorry three out of four of our cats escaped so i was spending a lot of time downstairs walking around the neighborhood uh looking for our cats and they all you know surprisingly they're all back home so if you've looked at my shorts you might have seen that we got footage of our one cat on the blink walking up to the door and us hurting her into the house but uh long story short all of our cats are okay and yeah I, I just wanted to share that because i thought it might make you happy to know our cats got out they're all okay having said that i hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see y'all next time bye